Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to elaborate on a question that was asked recently during a Q&A session on my Instagram page. And this is the question. What brushes do you suggest for a beginner? You should choose a brush that is most suitable for the type of work that you want to create. So these are the three most common types of watercolor brushes that you can find. This is the round brush. This is the flat brush and this is the wash brush. So for the round brush, this is capable of producing very thin lines to very thick lines. The flat wash can paint a large area. And the wash brush can paint an even larger area because it can hold a lot more water. There are different types of bodies for watercolor brushes. So this one that I have right here, this is a collapsible brush. So you can actually detach the body like this and you can use this as a cap to cap the brush. So this makes the brush more portable. So if you want to go outdoors and paint, this is something that you can put in your pencil case or in your bag very easily. It also protects the hair that's inside. So this is very convenient. I have a lot of collapsible brushes like this. The more traditional brushes would be the wooden brushes that features the wooden body like this. So these are quite common. This is a short handle brush, which is, I think, quite comfortable to hold and to use. The length is just right. There are also long handle brushes like this, which is much longer, but this is a bit, um, I would say, difficult to use because, I mean, long handle brushes the advantage is the length so if you want very loose strokes then you can draw like this by holding the brush like this very far away from the hair you can get very expressive and loose strokes but for general purposes i think short handle brushes like this they work uh, quite well and they are much easier to control when it comes to painting details there are different manufacturers for watercolor brushes here i have da vinci this is Escoda. this is hoban there's also rafael winston newton there are just a lot of different manufacturers the difference in brush quality between the top brush manufacturers is actually quite insignificant so when it comes to choosing different brands my suggestion is to just go to an art store or just get any brush that is easiest for you to find or that is most I would say value for money the main thing to note is the type of hair that comes with the brush the type of hair used in the brush is going to determine how the brush will perform. There are three types of hair, synthetic hair, natural hair from animals, and mixed hair with a mixture of synthetic and natural hair. And within synthetic, there are different types of materials that can be used to create the bristles. And as for animal hair, of course, you can have different types of animal hair. Now, different types of animal hair will have different characteristics so sometimes uh, mixed hair like this they have the characteristics of both types of brushes if you are a beginner with limited budget then i would suggest getting synthetic hair brushes or mixed hair brushes because they are more affordable natural hair brushes can be quite expensive especially those that use sable hair i have with me many watercolor brushes here by the way all these brushes they have been reviewed on my website if you want to check out the detailed reviews for each one of them, just visit the links in the video description below. So since you are a beginner, I'm going to assume that you have limited budget. So I'm going to recommend some brushes that are more affordable. So these are the four. And by the way, if you are choosing different brushes, you choose by the type of hair that is used and also by the shape of their hair so different manufacturers if they use the same hair the brush is going to perform quite similarly so the brand itself is not as important as the type of hair that is used so for those who really have a limited budget then you should go with a synthetic brush 
Synthetic brushes like this, they are good general purpose brushes. The hair does not hold as much water compared to natural hair brushes, but they are still quite versatile. So I can see some hair that spring out. This is not a big problem because as long as you wet the brush, if all the hair sticks together, then this is a good brush. But if you wet the brush and the hair still splits, then the brush may be damaged. The size I would recommend would be size 6 or size 8 for synthetic brushes because they do not hold as much water I recommend getting a larger size like a size 8 personally for me I use natural hair brushes so they hold more water so the brush sizes that I usually use would be a size 6 I sketch mostly on A5 sketchbook I find that size 6 brushes they work quite well with A5 sketchbooks Brands like Escoda, Da Vinci, Winston Newton, they all make synthetic brushes. And the next point I want to talk about is the body of the brush. Try and get a brush that is collapsible. I mean, you can get wooden brushes, but a collapsible brush is more flexible. If you want to bring your brush outdoor, at least you have the ability to collapse the brush and use it like this and you can put it in your bag but for wooden brushes like this this is a bit difficult to transport outdoors or if you want to paint outdoors it's a bit difficult to bring them out and there are really no disadvantages to collapsible brushes like this they are as durable compared to wooden brushes by the way I'm going to write a dedicated article just talking about beginner watercolor brushes so if you really need that specific recommendation like which brand to buy which size to buy and where to buy it you can uh, visit the link in the video description below for that post so the next brush that I would recommend if you have more budget would be this this is the Escoda Versatile brush if you paint mostly at home, then I would recommend the uh, mixed brushes. So here I have with me Da Vinci Cosmo Top Mix B. And this is also a Da Vinci brush. This is Cosmo Top Mix F. Now the brush hair, they are a mixture of different types of hair. Either way, Mix B or Mix F, they are both good because of the mixture of hair. It brings down the cost of the brush so they are actually quite worth the money all the brushes that i'm going to use right now are size 8 i want you to pay attention to how much water they can hold and also the type of strokes they can create so i'm going to start off with the most affordable brush this is the synthetic brush so i'm going to try and create the thinnest line possible and press down hard to show you the thick lines and let's see how much water this brush can hold so you can actually produce quite thin lines so even though it's much cheaper compared to natural hair brushes this is quite good too. It's quite a good brush. And surprisingly, you can hold a bit of water. So at this part here, it's starting to become dry. So this is a size 8 synthetic brush. And now let's use the mix brush. So this is the mix F brush from Da Vinci. Now the comparison is not very fair because right now I'm drawing, I'm painting very wide strokes so it's a bit difficult to tell how much water each brush can hold.
right now I am not able to see any significant differences between the affordable synthetic brush and the more expensive sable brush the synthetic brush it holds less water but when it comes to creating strokes like this it seems that there is not a lot of difference so let me do some more testing let's test for the transition between thin and thick strokes I'm going to start with the more affordable synthetic brush again Okay, let's switch over to the mixed hair brush. Now that this is dry, let's go through the differences. So the most obvious difference would be these three brushes. Now whenever I press down hard, they deposit more water and more paint. So the colors there are more concentrated when I press down a bit hard at these areas to get the thicker strokes I deposit more water and more paint so these areas they are more concentrated the colors are stronger compared to other areas they are a bit lighter so how the brush deposits water is a bit inconsistent it depends on where you actually press down the brush so this is synthetic and this is the mixed hair brush Skoda Versatile also has this characteristic. Now surprisingly for the synthetic brush, I was able to get the thin and thick uh, strokes rather easily. It's slightly more difficult with the Versatile. So you can see the variation here is a bit uh, more, I would say it's more tapered compared to this where I can get really thin and thick very uh, easily. Now mixed hair, I can get thin and thick very easily as well. So versatile, when I press down a bit harder, the hair it doesn't spread out that much compared to these two brushes. As for the sable hair, the sable hair is able to deposit water very consistently. So even when I press down the brush hard at these areas to get that thicker stroke, the colors, they are pretty evenly distributed so this is quite a flat color so this is quite different compared to this so let me zoom out so the difference is quite significant when it comes down to pressing the brush and how the water is released so looking at these characteristics I want to emphasize the point that I made earlier in the video again you should get the brush for the type of work that you want to create so for example if you are painting botanical subjects like leaves where you need to actually press down a bit harder to get that thicker leaf then perhaps the sable brush is more suitable or if you are using your brush for calligraphy work when you write calligraphy sometimes you do need to press down a bit harder if you want the colors to be consistent then of course you can get a sable but if you are painting short strokes then I think synthetic and mixed hair and versatile they are quite uh, acceptable so how about water brushes like this well they are very convenient the water is inside the body when you squeeze it they will come out through the hair here they are very easy to bring around but the downside is I find that sometimes they can be a bit difficult to control and also I find the synthetic hair to wear out quite fast so every few months I have to buy a new brush let's find out the difference between a normal brush and a water brush so I'm going to create a flat wash creating a flat wash with the normal brush like this is very easy so now I'm going to use the water brush and try and do the same thing so with the water brush you need to control the water very well when creating this type of washes you have to make sure that the water doesn't flow out from the hair if not you're going to get something like this because the water is constantly flowing it's going to dilute the paint so if you want to create a flat even wash it's a bit more challenging and right now I'm able to create a flat wash but you do need to pay 
uh, more attention to the water control. To get more paint, I would usually drip water onto the mixing well like this, but this is going to dilute the paint. So every time you add water, the paint, the concentration is going to be slightly different. And sometimes I feel that when using water brushes, the paint can appear a bit patchy. Now with normal brushes, I will just mix the paint like this. I will just apply it like this onto the paper. And each time I go back and reload, the concentration is going to be the same. So it's really very easy to create flat washers like this. But with the water brush, if you add more water, you need to uh, add more paint as well and sometimes it's difficult to get the same level of concentration. One thing the water brush can do very well is to create gradated washers like this. Now when you want to clean the water brush, you do need a container. If not, then you have to use a uh, tissue like this because if you want to change color, you need the hair to be clean. And sometimes uh, it takes a while to actually clean the hair because there's quite a lot of paint. If you have a water container or a cup like this, it's, it's just very easy. You can just dip it in like this and shake it around and the brush will be clean within seconds. For beginners, I recommend practicing with normal brushes first before you explore using water brushes. Alright, to conclude, I would say if you are a beginner, try and get an affordable brush first to try out. So you can get a synthetic brush. The one that I have here is a Hobin brush. This is called Tourist Mini. I bought this in Japan. If you want to get synthetic brushes, you can try getting Da Vinci synthetic brushes under the line called Cosmotop Spin. They are good quality brushes. If you find that you do not like these characteristics or the subject matter that you paint, uh, it doesn't work well with this sort of characteristics, then maybe you can upgrade later on to other brushes like the Sable brush. The downside of the synthetic brush is it doesn't hold as much water. So if you want brushes that hold a bit more water so that you don't have to constantly reload your brush, then you can consider getting versatile brush or the mix brush. And lastly, if you have more budget, of course, you can get a sable brush. So that's all for this review. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If there are any updates, I would post that in the text review that accompanies this video. Check out the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.